So um, the, the next couple of exercises are going to work with relative item. Right? And this allows us to retrieve um, two related elements from uh, a data structure. So if we go back to our um, grasshopper and rhino uh, file, save and close. If I drop in a grid of points, right, this is going to be again from vector grid, square grid. And I'll do the same thing I did before, which is to put a point container after P so that I can isolate just my points in the preview. All right. Now what I want to know is I want to know every point's unique um, location within the data structure. And what object did we use in order to take something that was organized in columns and be able to visibly show that location within the data structure? Well, if we think back, we, we use graft, right? And then we use the text tag 3D. So let's go to sets tree graft, and we'll drop that in. And that gives us every item on its own path. And then we use text tag 3D from vector point text tag 3D. All right, and we're going to take the grafted points. Those are our locations. And then we specified text to display. And now you can actually use the Fram Viewer to do this. You take the output of the Fram Viewer, and now you actually have the paths. But I prefer to use this new object that is the tree statistics because it can uh, give you all that information all at once. You don't actually have to have this object in your file. So it stays a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to use the graft into here. And before I connect, what did we have to do to P in order to make the data structure be coordinated? We also had to graft. So we'll take the points, uh, sorry, the paths, connect them, and that goes into T. All right, now we, our font size is too big, so I'll grab a slider that up to S. All right. Now we have um, each one of these elements located uh, uniquely. All right. Now, what if I wanted to make this as straightforward as possible? How can I just show the stuff that's important in terms of the levels of my data tree? It's one of the basic manipulation objects for our data structures. I think you got it. Simplify. We want to get rid of A and B because they don't really mean anything to us. So I'll simplify and then I'll connect my path. Just basically replace all the inputs of the graph. So now I have only the significant levels of my data tree visible within my, um, my text tag. Okay. Pop over to top view for a second. Now, Relative item and relative items allow us to access objects that are in a data structure based on the relationship between their paths. So let's go ahead and uh, from the simplify, let's drag this stuff down a little bit to give, us yourself, give ourselves some more room. Let's go to sets tree. We get a relative item, just a singular. Let's drop that into the canvas. This asks for the tree to operate on the offset combo, which we'll come back to later, and whether or not we want to wrap the objects relative to the paths or the indices. All right. So the first one's easy, right? T is the tree to operate on. So we'll go from simplify into T. That's what we want to operate on. Now, Let's say I'm somewhere in the middle of my grid. How can I describe in the simplest fashion the difference between this point location in my data structure and this point location in my data structure? Well, what's the difference between 2, 2 and 3, 3? 
The difference between these two is 1 and 1. So the difference between A is 1 and the difference between B is 1. So if I wanted to access this object and this object everywhere in the grid, so the relationship being diagonal, I could specify the relationship 1, 1. Okay, and that's exactly what the offset combo input is looking for. Right? So let's drop in a panel, double click it, and we're going to do curly brackets 1, semicolon 1, close curly brackets. So this is going to offset our data tree 1 and 1 in the A and B uh, placeholder locations. All right, so 1 and 1. Now we can connect O to that, and we're not going to see anything different. But as an output, what we get is the original tree item and the tree item relative to A, right? So let's drop in a, a line object from curve primitive line between two points. And let's connect A and B. What we've just done is now associate every item and the object that goes with it that's relative to it based on this uh, offset. 1, 1, right? So if I wanted to go just uh, laterally, I could do 0, sorry, 1, 0. So now my line segments are all moving this way. If I wanted to do vertically, I would do the opposite, 0, 1. All right, so this allows us to move through the uh, data tree with any relationship we want, right? That's why it's called relative item. So if you do 1, 1, and you do, say, negative 1, negative 1, make sure that's set as multi-line data. Or you try 0, 1, also in that same. I've unchecked multi-line data. Now I've got this line segment and this line segment. So if I'm just looking at this relative to line segments, now I have every combination between those two offsets. right? And each one of these is individual line segments. All right, now, what this means is that we can walk through a grid which can be in any, have any number of dimensions, in this case it's just two-dimensional, and start to connect elements within that grid in any fashion we want. Right? So you want to make this kind of uh, skewed quad grid, this is your object to do it. If you want to make the, a diamond grid, this is your object to do it. 